Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. Now in this episode is where we really start to create some really awesome stuff that uh, starts being able to communicate with the other things we have done. We have so far created a property system. We have created an XP system as sort of a communicator with that system to display how, how we could make use of it in a component. Now, after that, we created an attribute system, which allows us to have different attributes. And we don't have a whole lot of those so far. We only have our health. But now we will be adding further upon this. We have just been making like very the basics of a few different systems, and we haven't really fleshed them out that much with a whole lot of different uh, components within those components, so to speak. We, we only have health. We don't have like a mana and intelligence and strength and stuff like that yet. But Despite that, we are moving on to our next part of our system, which is going to be status effects. And I think this is a really cool system, so I really hope that you will enjoy this. Let's start off immediately, he says after having ranted for a few minutes. Anyway, so we create a folder. We will call this one uh, status effects. Going into this, we will create another component. So blueprint class, act component, we'll call it BPC for blueprint component, underscore status effects. Now this will be sort of our container or manager of our status effects. So this means that this component needs to be on the objects that are able to receive a status effect. Doing, having said that, we should immediately now add our blueprint component status effect to our character then. Like so. Close down a few of the other things here. So, with status effects, what do we want to do? Well, we want to do a few things. We want to first have the ability to add a status effect. We want to have the ability to remove a status effect. We want this component to be able to keep track of what our current status effects are. And yeah, let's start from the beginning. We're going to be needing a structure that describes what our status effect sort of does. So uh, going to our folder for status effects, we'll go to blueprints and structure. We will name it S underscore status effects. So one singular status effect will have a few different things. One of the things it will have is a float, which will represent a duration. The duration will be how long the status effect will be upon you. Now a status effect is, and I haven't gone through this yet, but it's essentially a collective word to describe things like that are normally referred to as buffs or debuffs or curses or boons. All of these kind of temporary effects although they could be permanent, of course, uh, that give you some kind of positive or negative traits or effect. And that is where a duration comes in. So a uh, status effect will exist for this amount of time before it expires, essentially. Now, in addition to that, we will also add another float, and this one we will be calling periodic time. Like so. So this will be sort of a a value to represent uh, an interval where things may happen. If you consider something like a poison, if you have put a, a poison debuff on someone, then you can say that it will have something like a duration. And let's say that it is uh, three seconds by default, and it would have a periodic time of left, let's say one. So this means that we could have the poison which stays on for three seconds and every one second we could have it tick for a bit of damage for example. So that's what this will be representing. Our next variable will be a texture 2D and the reason for that is because most of the time when you have status effects you want to have a visual representation in the UI somehow of describing what it is so, so the player can just glance and see ah oh, shit I got that thing or yay I have this buff now or something like that. So we will be uh, naming it the icon and we don't need a default icon for it, I think. We'll create a new variable and this one will be a string. So this one I will just call description text. And 
Now I will be using this as sort of like a very rudimentary way to display uh, what the debuff is. So we'll just have a text under it saying uh, it, this is this debuff so, or buff for that matter so that we can easily see it because we will, we will not be implementing a whole lot of uh, uh, inventory slash user interface uh, uh, nice to have kind of uh, functionality essentially. Having created this status effect, we're now happy with this and we'll close it down. Now with our structure in place, we can add some functionality. Uh, one of the key parts will be to have an array of our active stat status effects. So we'll create one called active status effects. We will make it of the type S status effects. We will make this an array, like so. Actually, no, that's not correct we want to have a reference to an object we haven't created an object yet let's create an object a blueprint class of type actor we we'll call this one bp status effects yes yes that's what we'll do so we'll go to our status effect and we'll change this from this the structure type to the bp status effect so object reference to a status effect so this array will keep track of References to objects that are status effects. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so one of the most basic things we, we may want to have as functionality for this is to actually be able to retrieve this information. So we'll just create a helper function called um, get status effects. And again, the reason why we're doing this is because we want to have like a, a pathway for classes to communicate with so that they will use that instead of grabbing variables themselves. Uh, tends to be easier to keep track of things that way. So we'll just return these references, like so, and we have that function done for now. In addition to that, we also want to have the ability to add status effects and to remove status effects, since this is just going to be our sort of like container or like, uh, yeah, essentially container of status effects for a specific object in the world or actor. So we'll create a function, we'll call it add status effect. And in this, we will drag out our array and we will say add. So we will add a status effect to this and the stat status effect that we will add, we can drag off like so. So we get an um, uh, input pin to it. We will name it uh, status effect to add, like so. I'll save after that we hook this up like so yeah and that is essentially all we want to do here for now uh, we will get back to this later on when we actually create some more functionality available but for now uh, another function we need is going to be remove status effects Again, this is just to make sure that we are able to add and remove our status effects to the component itself. The functionality of the status effects will lie in the actual classes themselves, which will become apparent pretty soon here. So we'll drag out our array again. We will say remove, and we want to remove an item. And the item will be an object reference. So we'll drag that off to our function and we'll rename this to maybe uh, status effects to remove. Like so, and we hook it up like so. So now we have more or less all the functionality that we need for the actual status effect component. We are going to be doing something a little bit different this time, and we're going to be implementing our listeners for this. Uh, or listeners, sorry, our event dispatchers, because we're going to be having some here as well, because it might be that some classes are interested when a status effect is removed or a status effect is added. So what we will be doing is we will be creating an event dispatcher and we will be making it, actually first we will name it something. We will name it status effect was added. We'll make the inputs of it to be of the type BP status effect. And it's an object reference and we'll call this status effect added. 
And again, to make this easier, because we're going to be adding one more, we'll drag it out, we'll create a bind, we'll drag off like so, we'll create an event, add the custom event, we'll call it signature. We have done this before, we are very fluent at it now. We create one more event dispatcher, we call it status effect was removed. We'll go here, copy signature, we choose signature, and there we go, we have the signature. Everything is good and fine. Now, going to our add status effect, we will drag out our call to uh, that event dispatcher. We'll hook it up and we'll make sure that it also gets a reference to the status effect that was added, like so. Compile and save, we go to our remove status effect and we do similarly and we add a call to our removing of our status effect. So we have now done some prep work for ev the eventuality of, of something being interested in uh, knowing if a status effect was added or removed at any point in time. Next, we will start off with just one function in our status effect uh, blueprint that we created. And we, we have it here. We want to create a function which is called attempt application. Compile and save. Going back to our BPC status effect, we go to our add status effect and we now drag off from the status effect uh, object reference and type in attempt application. So we will be going into more detail about this in the next episode. But for now, this is essentially us trying to have our status effect uh, trigger and make it come to life. So yeah, compile and save. Let's create a quick test to see if this is working. So how can we do this? Well, first of all, we'll create another input. So keyboard eight, we're running out of keys soon, but for now we're good. It's not a catastrophe until we're completely out. So we have our status effects. We'll add that. And what we want to do here is we want to bind status effect was added. This allows us to say that when we press eight and if at any point after that a status effect is added, we will be notified. And we'll add an event for that saying status effect was added. We'll drag out from it to have a print just to see if it works. And we'll say, we have a new status effect exclamation mark because that seems to be good. But we don't have any actual way to add the status effect currently because we don't, well, we don't really have any status effects and we haven't made any code for it. So what we'll do is we'll make a keyboard event again for nine. We'll take, take our BPC status effect. What we'll do here is we will uh, type in spawn actor from class. And we have created the base class of status effects, which is called BP status effect, even though it doesn't have any functionality in it. And we could add some stuff here. We need to expand the transformer. It will complain uh, like so. We should uh, put in uh, owners, instigators and things like that, but we don't really need to right now because we're just debug testing. And what we want to do is want to add a status effect to this blueprint component for our status effects. And the reference of this actor that we just spawned is what we're going to be adding to that. So compiling and saving. We'll play. We will expand. And so pressing 8 now should have bound the listener to if a status effect is being added or not to our component. Pressing 9, we can see that we get the text. We have a new status effect. So all of that code seems to be working. We have our event dispatchers happening and we are able to add status effects to our component. So that's good. That's a good place to stop for now. Hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.